So good evening, my name is Lauren Delmar. I'm with the Fairfax County Department of Transportation, and I want to welcome you to this meeting to discuss the expansion of capital bike share in the Franconia district. Before we begin, I'd like to review some guidelines so everyone can participate and get the most out of this session. Please note that the meeting is being recorded and will be posted on YouTube and then linked to the uh, active Fairfax webpage. Microsoft Teams does offer a live captioning service. You can find that by clicking the three dots at the top of the screen and choosing turn on live captions. Once the presentation is completed, we will begin the question and answer portion during which participants will ask their questions aloud. This chat feature has the chat feature in this meeting has been disabled, so we will not be taking written questions. If you're on the phone, please hold your questions to the end. We'll have instructions on how to ask questions at the conclusion of the presentation. I'm going through all my notes here. Uh, we will encourage you to submit your comments to today's meeting also using our um, website and email address um, or by phone call, and we'll have addresses for you at the end of the presentation. So before we begin, I believe that Supervisor Lusk with the Franconia District has joined us tonight. So I'd like to introduce Supervisor Lusk and ask if he has any opening remarks. Let me get your camera or your um, audio start going, Supervisor Lusk. All right, you have the ability to control your audio and video now. I think you're muted. Oh, there you uh, go. Can you hear me now? Yes. OK, thank you for that. Um, delighted to be here and I'll say this idea of having uh, capital bike share as a part of our community is one that uh, I think makes a lot of sense. Um, thinking about the proximity to the metro and then thinking about a lot of the additional development that we've seen along the Franconia Springfield area. This is something that will give us the ability to allow people to be able to get out of their cars, um, use the bike service to get to the metro, to get to the shopping, and then to the new, we've got a couple of new facilities that are coming online here as well, including uh, additional improvements to Springfield Town Center, as well as the new hospital that will be coming in a couple of years with Inova Health, and then the new governmental center, which uh, will be in the heart of the Franconia Springfield um, area. So uh, I'm delighted that we have the opportunity to talk about this. I look forward to hearing the feedback from those who are here participating and uh, um, we'll have capital bikes here, hopefully in our community as a result of this uh, meeting. So thank you very much. Thank you very much, Supervisor Lusk. I'm gonna go ahead and also introduce Zach Desjardins, he is our interim capital bike share manager and he's going to be giving the presentation today. Um, so Zach, you can go ahead and start sharing your screen and kick us off. Okay. All right, can you see that? Awesome. Zach, it's loading, loading, cool. loading. Now we've got your computer backdrop. And there's a presentation. Thank you. Oh, awesome. All right, great. Made it through the series of tubes. Um, so good evening, everyone. Um, as this one said, I'm the interim capital bike share program manager. And uh, as uh, uh, Supervisor Lux, I'm also very delighted to be here to talk about expanding capital bike share in Franconia District. Um, so if you're not familiar, Capital Bike Share is our regional bicycle transit service that allows people to rent a bike and ride to more than 700 stations across seven jurisdictions. Um, it serves as a key first and last mile um, to the Washington Metro. Um, if you'd like to become a member, it's just $95 a year. You get unlimited 45 minute rides. If you're not a member, it's just a dollar to unlock a bike and just five cents a minute to ride. And uh, if you're a low income resident, you actually qualify to um, for just a $5 membership per year and you get unlimited 60 minute rides, including on the electric bikes. Um, and our bikes are designed with with safety in mind, so they're they're upright, they're pretty slow. Um, and we've had very few reported crashes here in the county. Um, so 
as I mentioned before, we, we'd see a lot of folks uh, transferring between different transportation modes, um, you know, our connector buses and as well as Metro bus and Metro rail, of course. People use Capital Bike Share to run errands, to go to appointments, um, visit our, our shops and our, our, our grocery stores in particular during the pandemic have uh, have done very well. Um, the, the, the bike share station close to grocery stores. Um, and of course, we, uh, people enjoy uh, enjoy uh, like like to check out our bikes and go for long, um, enjoyable rides. Um, and it also comes as a useful tool if you need to make a one way trip and and don't want to ride home um, or ride or want to ride home having uh, from from another destination. Um, and then it, one of the key reasons that we uh, the county has capital bike share is we're trying to replace a lot of these shorter car trips. Um, with 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 bike share trips so that it reduces congestion and has has lots of environmental benefits. Um, so this is a picture of a, a typical capital bike share station. Um, this is out in uh, Preston. Um, it's on the street. It's got um, these white flex posts to kind of guide you around the station and discourage people from parking in front of it, as well as there's a, a, a bike lane next to this one. Um, so there, there are two different funding sources we're going to be using for Franconia District. Uh, one is the Northern Virginia Transportation Commission's grant um, uh, for four stations around the Franconia Springfield Metro. Um, and then we also have kind of a what I all, uh, probably a unique uh, uh, funding source. We have a, a congressionally directed spending uh, grant or an earmark um, for capital bike share in underserved neighborhoods all across the county. Um, and so we're proposing to put three of those near the, near the um, in the part of Franconia District near Huntington Metro Rail Station. Um, in terms of what we look for when we're trying to install capital bike share stations and what what factors uh, make, would make it a success, um, we wanted to kind of extend the uh, leverage of the existing network in the city of Alexandria, as well as a, a planned expansion of ours in the Mount Vernon District. And as I mentioned before, we're, we're trying to use our, our Metro as an anchor to facilitate first and last mile trips. We have some technical requirements um, such as solar access and safety. And of course, the, the, we have some programmatic requirements that I, I just mentioned, uh, such as serving underserved neighborhoods, as well as um, going to areas with some residential density. Um, and of course, we also would like to attract some ridership and revenue um, to kind of make the system uh, useful to the, the most number of uh, residents. Um, so this is the proposed station list. Um, and. Um, on here, there are eight stations, um, but one of them is literally just over the border. You can see uh, the Franconia District line um, at the Huntington Metro Rail South entrance. Um, and so that that's I included this one because it will primarily serve Franconia District residents, but it isn't technically in um, it's not technically in uh, Franconia, of course. Um, so this is a, a map of, of, of the part of Franconia District that we're, we're considering putting in stations. So if you see the, the red uh, uh, squares, those are existing capital bike share stations over in the city of Alexandria. And then the green dots are planned stations within um, Franconia. Um, so you see there's four around the, uh, the metro um, at the Franconia Springfield Metro, and then there's three in the Jefferson Manor neighborhood adjacent to the Huntington Metro. Um, and then I've got a little bit more zoomed in uh, version. You can kind of see a little bit closer to where, where, where exactly we're, we're talking about. Um, so we have the, the, the Huntington Metro South entrance. Um, so you'd be able to ride right up to the entrance and then hop on the, the escalator down to the, the station. And we're thinking about putting one along at the corner of Old For um, North Kings Highway and Fort Drive, as well as one down near the South uh, Alexander, the South Alex apartment complex. Um, on Pogue Street and uh, North Kings Highway, as well as one on uh, Fairhaven Avenue. Um, we noted the, that the facilities, uh, the bicycle facilities on North Kings Highway don't don't exist, but we anticipate a lot of folks will actually probably ride to um, the ride to the other stations um, on uh, either the sidewalks or on uh, Bangor uh, uh, Bangor Drive. Um, both both options are are allowed and encouraged. Um, so the first station that we that we have here is Fairhaven Avenue and Monticello Drive. Um, so we have some apartments right next to it, um, as well as uh, a quite a few duplexes. So we like that this was some residential density, um, and it was a, a a little bit of a height to the metro for people to walk. So um, we thought people might enjoy uh, biking instead. 
Um, and so uh, the, the location would specifically be uh, right about here. Um, and technically, this is this is only one parking space since there isn't really enough space between the fire hydrant and um, and, and and a second uh, parking space. So it would repurpose one. Um, at the, at the corner of North Kings Highway and Court Drive, we would we would also put a, a bike share station in the street. Um, so if, you, if you're familiar with Bottom Edis, it would be pretty much right right next to them. Um, we, we we anticipate a couple of folks might ride to the metro here, but we have a lot of other density where um, some folks would be willing to ride a little bit further um, uh, to other stations within the network too. Um, and that we also like that the, this location has um, the shopping center has a lot of uh, businesses people frequent, including grocery stores, bakeries, um, nail salons, and whatnot. So this is one of the reasons why we picked it. Or we're, I'm sorry, we we are uh, proposing it, uh, not picked it. Um, I, so then going a little bit further south along North Kings Highway, um, this is a, 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 yeah, excuse me, this is the South Al uh, South Alex apartment complex. Uh, in Pogue Street, and so um, this this station would repurpose three parking spaces because we're we're anticipating that this would be a little bit busier station than than our typical county ones. Our typical county bike share stations are just twelve docks, and this one we anticipate would be busy enough that it would warrant three docks or sorry, fifteen docks or three more. Um, so we we'd pick a little bit bigger size to help accommodate that demand. Um, moving a little bit west. Um, out to the Franconia Springfield Metro, Metro and, and uh, Springfield and in that neighborhood. Um, so you can see in the far uh, bottom uh, left, there's the, the Metro entrance on, on the north side. Um, and so we looked at, um, excuse me. Um, so we have uh, three other stations that would kind of feed that location. So the first one is up on C Trend Way, up in the, uh, up in the, North part or upper part of the screen. Um, there's a nice little bike path that connects that or uh, multi-use trail that connects that to the to the metro. So we uh, folks will be able to easily get there. Um, and then to the right right of the screen, uh, the bottom right, there are, there are two other locations on uh, Metro uh, Metro Drive as well as um, Charles Arrington Drive. And those two, we we, is, uh, we, we don't anticipate you know, people will ride along Franconia Springfield Parkway, but there are some uh, paths. Um, on on some parts of on, on one side of the partway that that's continuous so that, that people can ride and, and get to the station safely. Um, so this is the location we have proposed at, at the Metro Rail Station. So if you go out the north entrance, you'd be able to walk uh, ride right down the escalator across the street, and the bike share station would be right there. Um, just to about a mile north of that is C, C Trend Way and Andrew Matthew Terrace. Um, so we would repurpose two parking spaces um, to along with these brand new bike lanes um, to uh, no, for, so, so, uh, for, to create space for the station. Um, over here uh, at Charles Arrington Drive and Manchester Lakes Drive, a little bit to the uh, to the east of that of, of that location, it's about a 1.3 mile bike ride to the metro. So that's a little bit far for a lot of people to walk. Um, and there's a lot of townhouse density and apartments around this, this uh, around this, this intersection. And so the station will go here and repurpose uh, two parking spaces. Um, and then uh, over here at Metro Park Drive and Walker Lane, um, this is a little bit more office oriented than we've been considering of late. Uh, a, lot, a lot of our stations adjacent to office complexes, as you might imagine, have, have not as much ridership as they've had historically. Um, but one of the, the cool, cool uh, features about this spot is it will help serve the Inova Health Complex, uh, as Supervisor Luska mentioned earlier. Um, and, and plus, it also serves some, some restaurants, too, next to, uh, uh, next to these offices. Um, and this, this location would purpose uh, two parking spaces. It also has the uh, additional benefit of making people in the crosswalk a little bit more visible because our stations are um, lower than a uh, parked car. So it's much easier to see around them and, and be seen around them. One of the other exciting um, parts of um, our grant is we have these fabulous electric bikes um, that we're proposing to acquire. So since July 2020, a little over two years ago, Capital Bike Share has had these um, black uh, bikes that are uh, electric bikes that have been provided by our contractor. Um, 
they've made up only about 6% of our fleet, but they've generated 15% of our trips. So that indicates to us that they're very popular among residents and, um, and, and people enjoy riding them, even though they, they cost a little bit more than a, a classic bike. Um, they also have a, 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 neat, a neat feature um, uh, on them. Uh, and you can lock them to a, a public bike rack instead of a docking station. We, we refer to this as, as dockless. And then typically we've limited that to within a half, or, or excuse me, within a quarter mile of a, a service area, uh, <laughs> within a quarter mile of a station. And we, we call that the service area. Um, the, since the, the electric bikes have, have launched in, in Fairfax County, uh, we've had very high compliance with e-bike parking rules, meaning people aren't leaving them where they're not supposed to. Um, and we're not getting very many complaints when people actually do. Um, and then also about 5% of our trips have actually started and ended outside of a dock countywide. And I think one of the, the, the coolest features about this is where the rest of us have to pay um, a per minute charge of, if you're a member, it's 10 cents. If you're a non-member, it's 15 cents a minute. Equity members get to ride for free for 60 minutes. And then if they do want to leave the bike outside of a station, they, we waive the $2 fee that the rest of us pay for. Um, so this is an example on the left of a person locking uh, an electric bike to the um, to the to the rack, um, and then there's three examples here of service areas. And this is uh, if we are successful in acquiring electric bikes, this is what the service areas would uh, would look like. Um, so you can see around uh, Reston, you know, these little red dots in the middle are all our existing capital bike share stations. And um, you can leave your your bike uh, anywhere in that area um, in, on a you know, public property, of course, um, for a two dollar fee. But if you leave it anywhere in the red area, um, it's a twenty five dollar charge. Um, so that we found that that charge has really deterred some of the, the bad behavior, um, as well as the lock itself has been, you know, very uh, very successful in encouraging people to uh, leave leave these bikes in the right place. Um, and so going forward. Uh, you know, we, we the existing bike we've had is is, is is a design from 2009, and it's served our system very well. We've had millions and millions of rides on that type of bike, um, but it really hasn't changed that much over the years. Um, and so uh, we plan to, we'd like to acquire electric bikes instead of classic bikes going forward because it represents kind of a big step forward um, in terms of a design and usefulness for, uh, for our, our, our riders. Um, so we would use both funding from this this uh, Northern Virginia Transportation Grant, as well as um, this countywide earmark to acquire these these types of bikes. Um, I mentioned earlier that our our existing black electric bike fleet is provided by our contractor. Um, it's kind of a first generation product, and we're gonna uh, it'll gradually begin phasing out in August 2021, or excuse me, August 2023. Um, it, it's not really designed for long service life, and so. Um, and, and so that's why it's going to start phasing out. Um, so if we, if we don't buy electric bikes, you know, as, as part of our, our ongoing grants, we weren't going to have any more. Um, so that's one of the reasons why we want to uh, acquire them. And lastly, I'll, I'll say that while electric bike purchase price is almost four times as much as our classic bikes, um, it's paid for with uh, those grants that I mentioned, as well as um, the higher operating costs of of, of of managing those bikes are actually covered uh, entirely by rider fees, except of course by um, our equity members that we, we subsidize that a little bit. Um, and so this is a, a, a picture of what our, our bike will, uh, will look like. Um, it's, you can see, so we've got the, our classic kind of red on the, on the, on the back uh, side fender there. Uh, we've got a locking mechanism um, with the black, uh, black cable lock. Um, this bike's got uh, some kind of interesting features. So it has GPS, so people steal it and kind of track them down. And if they were to steal it and then disassemble it, they'd find that every single part is unique and there wouldn't be much point in, in taking it. So we, 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 we anticipate we wouldn't have many, uh, we anticipate that this bike, we should be able to keep track of and not 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 lose to, to, to that, to thieves. Um, we've got an updated uh, 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 adjustment for the, uh, the, the bike seat, as well as we've got a much bigger battery too. Um, so that, that means that our, our electric bikes will last a little bit longer in the field without having to go out and send our crews to swap the batteries. Um, and the top speed of this bike is about 20 miles an hour. Um, and 
So our next steps in the process, um, we would work with our, our, uh, our grantor at the Northern Virginia Transportation Commission to order the equipment for the four station sites. We'd work with uh, Virginia Department of Transportation to obtain permits, um, as well as work, uh, <clears throat> as well as work with our, our friends at uh, the Washington Metro to obtain permits at the Huntington Metro entrance. Um, we'd also have to work with Virginia Department of Transportation to access our county white earmark. In terms of timeline, so we'd hope to start installing these stations um, around the Springfield Metro, uh, Franconia Springfield Metro in the next uh, in 2023. Um, but we don't anticipate installing the earmark, um, the stations closer to the Huntington Metro until 2024. And of course, most importantly of all, we'd like to hear from you. Um, so we're accepting public input via um, bike Fairfax at fairfaxcounty.gov. Through the December 16th, we have a phone number here, 703-877-5600, TTY-711. And of course, we also have a mailing address as well if you'd like to write to us. Um, and I'm ready to take your questions. Thank you, Zach. We will open the meetings, meeting now for questions and comments. Here are the instructions for providing questions or comments. Raise your hand so that's located at the top of your screen next to the three dots. I will then enable your microphone and call on you to ask your question. When you're finished, please lower your hand so we know that you don't have additional questions. Um, please unmute yourself when, when I call your name to ask your question and your comment, and then please mute yourself after you have asked your question. If you are calling in on the phone, press star five to raise your hand. And when you're called upon by your phone number, or I'll, I'll just call the last five, four digits of your number, press star six to unmute. And then after you're finished, please push star six to mute and star five to lower your hand. So I see we have our first question. This is coming from David Duffy. I'm going to allow your mic. Hi, can you hear me? Yes, we can hear okay. you. Um, I guess I don't. Uh, the locations you picked seem mostly fine. I'm I guess number one, I'm kind of curious why you don't have anything at Springfield Town Center. And then if I can throw in another thing, is there any consideration for the actual bike infrastructure, like getting to these places? I live in this area. I bike in this area. It is not great, even in the places where you're showing them around Franconia Springfield. I also used to live in the townhouse neighborhood where you're putting one of the bikes and that neighborhood has a shuttle. I don't know if that impacts like the number of bikes you would put, but they already have a shuttle that goes to the metro station during rush hour. And then the healthplex, I believe, also has a tags shuttle that runs regularly if that impacts your uh, calculations. Sure. Um, Sorry, I know that was a lot. Sorry. <laughs> no worries. I, I took notes. Um, so yeah, I appreciate the question about uh, why not in uh, Springfield Town uh, Springfield Town Center. Um, we at least in this round, we were trying to focus on on getting people. Uh, as you noted, the the bicycle infrastructure is is developing, um, and we we're, we're trying to figure out good ways to get people um, to and from the key anchor, the, the Springfield Metro, and so. We we primarily focused on the uh, east side of of I ninety I ninety five, um, but as as things change, as as we find more funding, um, Springfield Town Center is absolutely a next uh, a great next location, um, especially with some of the developments of that Supervisor Luck had mentioned before. Um, you know, knowing knowing there's some density over there, there's a lot of shopping, um, and it would definitely be something that we would absolutely consider uh, in in the future. Um, and, and in terms of bicycle infrastructure, um, you know, most of that. Uh, unfortunately, I, I wish I had a budget of my own to approve uh, uh, to improve the bicycle infrastructure as we we're building the stations. But the grant is pretty scoped towards um, towards uh, capital bike share only. Um, and so, you know, the county does have other programs to gradually try to get to all of the many uh, outstanding uh, issues with with our, our bicycle network. Right, I, I get that it's not part of the money, but if you have some sort of 
ear, like especially that trail that is right between the medical center and the, the bridge that you would take to go down to Franconia that's in very bad condition and it's very uncomfortable to ride on currently, just for your own knowledge. Okay, thank you. Sure. All right, I have an additional hand from Brian. I'm gonna, hold on, I'm gonna unmute you or allow your mic. Now you can control your mic, Brian. Hi. Um... I uh, just had a fairly similar concern with um, some of the planning for like the Huntington area, um, particularly that area on um, uh, North Kings Highway tends to be like really unsafe to ride on right now. And while like in theory, the um, station um, point for North Kings Highway and Poeg Street should be a really good place to uh, uh, travel to. Um, it, it's almost impossible to ride between that section of road, between um, Poeg Street and basically where the Bob and Edith Steiner is because the um, sidewalks are pretty, pretty neglected in that area. Um, so, I mean, if you were to try to get recommended directions, it would recommend you to ride all the way down to Telegraph Road, which would make the trip twice as long, just because there's pretty much no infrastructure on that section of uh, road. So I think it should be made a priority to improve the infrastructure for that section as well for this project to really succeed? Yeah, thank you for the question. Um, yeah, the, I, I have noticed the sidewalks are not not in great shape. Um, there, there is kind of a parallel street. If you're going to the metro, you can go that way. If you want to go to Alexandria, you can go go, go that direction as well. There's a little, little path down there. Um, but it is, as, as I said, it, unfortunately, it, it's not improving the infrastructure is not part of this grant uh, as much as I wish it was. But, but thank you for your comment. Thank you. Do we have any additional questions? Brian, do you want to lower your hand or did you have a follow up question? OK, great. Uh, he lowered his hand. All right. Uh, OK, I've got another question from Diane. Diane, I'm going to allow your mic. There you go. Hi, um, I'm not familiar with this program at all. So my apologies for my ignorance. And I only found out about this meeting six minutes before um, beforehand. But do you, uh, Virginia has a helmet log. And like I said, I'm not familiar with this at all. Do they provide helmets as well or people exempt when they use these bikes? Oh, thanks, Diane, and I appreciate you making the time um, uh, on such short notice. <laughs> Um, no, uh, Virginia Ford uh, does not have a helmet law, um, and so riders usually just bring their own helmet, and if they'd like, they can order one through the Capital Bike Share website. Um, we sell them fairly fairly cheaply there. Um, the bikes there are pretty heavy, and they're upright um, compared to how, you know, if you're classic 10-speed, where people are kind of bent over and riding really fast, these bikes are, are, are heavier because um, they're built to last 10, 12 years. Um, and, and if you're sitting upright, you can better see uh, what's going on around you. Um, so we've had very few issues with 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 lack of elements. But thank you for your question. Mm -hmm. All right, I have another question from Alexis. Alexis, you should be able to control your mic. Hi, good evening, can you hear me? Yes. Great. Um, Zach, I was wondering, do you know anything about how Capital Bike Share circulates their electric bikes around their 700 plus stations? And is there any expectation of you know, how many might be available or around at a given time in you know, at these new stations? 
Um, yeah, thank you for your question, Alexis. Um, so the current um, metric, and I apologies if you can hear me in the background. Um, the, the, the current methodology, since the contractor owns the bikes, is they they put them um, where the most demand is. So we don't really get very many of them out in Fairfax at the moment. Um, but by buying our own, they'll essentially uh, take um, take uh, take a percentage of what each jurisdiction buys, and that percentage they're going to try to keep in each of the jurisdictions. Um, how that will work with kind of a different, you know, having having Franconia and and Mount Vernon having kind of a disconnected network from the other parts of the county, <laughs> we're not quite sure yet. But by buying our own, we, we can have a much greater say than than if uh, than relying on uh, the contractor's uh, bikes. All right, thank you. Another question from Diane. Um. What if the bikes are are ridden and then dumped, you know, not taken back to the um, the place where they're supposed to go and end up being abandoned in neighborhoods or on um, places that they should not be and become an eyesore or a pedestrian um, impediment? Does the contractor realize you know keep track and do they actively go out and seek these missing bikes in a timely manner um yes is the short answer um yeah, they're a pretty valuable asset of ours and and you know they're you know an important part of their job is to make sure that those assets stay with with the the system and they function within our our system and not not be abandoned in, in places um our classic bikes uh, over the last few years, we've had kind of increases in, in theft, um, so people will find a way to wiggle it out of the, the, the station somehow. Um, it's primarily a problem in, in D.C. and um, not so much out here in Fairfax, um, but I have seen bikes that have been abandoned in, in places. Um, you can uh, uh, you write to uh, Bike Fairfax at fairfaxcounty.gov or, or contact us in any other way. If you see one of those out there, we can absolutely come out and, and our contractor will go out and pick it up. Um, and then if you're a rider, if you rented the bike and you do that, um, you could be responsible for about a, a, two, uh, a lost bike charge, um, which would uh, significantly deter you from doing that. So we, we, we don't really have that as much as, as we did um, when the system first started. But um, as, as a rider, you, you could be financially liable for that. So that, that kind of deters, or at least our riders, keeping the bikes close to the, the stations. Okay, thank you. I do have another question, if that's okay. Yes, go ahead. Sure. Uh, um, it, tags was mentioned earlier because I'm I'm. This is Diane Bouton, and I live over in the Springfield Civic Association area of uh, Crestwood near Springfield Plaza. And um, tags used to come over to our neighborhood, and it it was utilized um, by our residents and we felt it was kind of unfair when it was kind of taken away, though I don't know a whole lot about it. And I can understand why a bike share wouldn't necessarily be put over in this area because as a um, previous person said, I think it would be difficult to safely get across like the Commerce Street Bridge to the metro so it's like we're always kind of left out here i mean we are getting a transit center and i don't know a whole lot about how that's going to to run back and forth but i just kind of wanted to to make supervisor lask aware that tags used to come over to our area and now it does not um we used to have a representative um in our civic association who's who participated and unfortunately, when he passed away, uh, that position did as well. And like I said, I don't know much about it, but I just wanted to mention it uh, for future reference. So thank you. Thank you for your comment. All right, I'm going to go to Jeff. 
Hi, thank you for the presentation and I'm, I'm really glad that the county is moving forward with this in Franconia and that the supervisor supports it. I just had a quick question about the timeline because it so it sounds like Huntington Metro would be sometime in 2024. So that made me curious about the timeline for having bike share along Richmond Highway. And I wondered if you have any idea when that would happen. Um, uh, is this part of your talking about so Richmond Highway uh, along like the Richmond Highway BRT quarter? Well, you're, you're um, you had a map that actually showed some along Richmond Highway. I guess oh. you talked about the Mount Vernon yeah, that's district. Public meeting. <laughs> oh, okay. Well, did <laughs> you know? Oh, no, okay. I don't know if if um if you know the timeline for that. What that look what that looks like? Because the reason um, one of the reasons I asked is because, yeah. um, of course, the bike share. The more you have, more docks you have, the more successful it'll be, and. There is a lot of density along Richmond Highway, and I think there's a lot of people who are who don't own cars who will be using it. So that's and that's why I'm curious. I think it'll be really key to the success of of the program in Eastern Fairfax County. Yeah, no, it's a it's a great question and, and an excellent point. Uh, I think the um, so I think it's the the Richmond Highway Bus Rapid Transit is, is developed and, and built out because um, it's going to have these these fabulous bike paths on both sides. It's going to have really nice uh, new crosswalks. Um, that would be a really great opportunity to extend it further down um, along the, the eastern border of Franconia District and, and put, a, put in a matching network along uh, the Mount Vernon District. Um, but obviously that's 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 years away, fortunately. As much as I as as much as I wish it would 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 come sooner. Um, but yeah, that's uh, thank you for the comment. Thank you. I'm going to go to Joan. Okay, can you hear me? Yes. Hello. Okay. Hi. Hi, so this is Joan Clark. I'm with TAGS, the Transportation Association of Greater Springfield. Um, hi, everybody. And Diane, I am um, so glad to hear your voice, but I, I wanted to just um, point out the, the thing that you raised about the TAGS buses. When they the routes were changed back in, oh gosh, it was around 2006 eight or 10. Um, what happened there was the TAGS buses actually were so successful that what the Fairfax connector actually took over those routes to accommodate the uh, volume of passengers. And that's how it became split off from the current TAGS routes. <clears throat> Uh, there should be ample Fairfax connector bus service to that area. And, um, you know, if, if you're interested, we could look further into that with you so you can understand how that happened. Thank you, Joan. Going to take it to Jorge. Good evening, uh, Fairfax County Transportation. First of all, thank you for the presentation. Um, I am a member of uh, Fairfax Alliance for Better Bicycling and also a founder and member of Bike Burke and Bike LBSS. Uh, efforts in Burke uh, to make both walking and biking safer for people. Uh, just want to voice my voice of support for additional capital bike share stations, especially because capital bike share has programs like the capital bike share for all um, and i would really like to just voice my uh support for potentially having some sort of capital bike share for all for students similar to the fairfax county student um, bus pass with the fairfax connector something like that for capital bike share would be great and i would also like to ask that in addition to the expansions around route corridors there might be thought to expansions uh around along um, school routes, uh, especially to provide alternative uh, active transportation for students. 
um, and that would be great too. Uh, if if you if you need help in that effort, um, it's something that I've looked into already in my community. Thank you again. Appreciate the time, and thank you for your work. Uh, thank you, Hurry, for the comment and, and thoughts. Um, yeah, the only, the only thing I'll add is um, one one cool thing about um, compared to many other transportation options is. Um, like, like for example, the e-scooters, you have to be 18 or older. But with Capital Bike Share, you, you can, uh, our, our minimum age is 16. Um, so that, that makes it a little bit easier to uh, to market this to high schoolers and, and whatnot. Um, but thank you. Uh, appreciate the comment. Thanks, Jorge. I'm going to go back to David. Uh, the comment about the Richmond Highway bus corridor reminded me there is a proposed reconstruction of Franconia Metro Station. I don't know if you're aware of it. I just wanted to make sure that you, your planned location wouldn't be impacted. I personally hope that they don't do what they're planning to do because they want to add even more lanes of traffic around the station. So I don't think it will be conductive, but you should be aware of it so that your station doesn't get ripped up in a couple of years. Yeah, thank you. Um, yeah, we were working with Wamana to obtain the permits for that, and um, uh, and you know, we'll, we'll definitely um, make sure that we're we're out of that should that project go ahead. So thank you. Thank you. We have um, a couple of raised hands from Joan and Jorge who have already spoken. Are you guys uh, interested in speaking again? If not, can you lower your hand so I can keep track? Okay, perfect. So taking any additional questions now. I have no more raised hands. Oh, I got one more here from Ian. Ian, you can now control your mic. Thank you. Um, enjoyed the presentation. I do have a couple of questions. One is what kind of batteries are on the e-bikes and um, if they, oops, sorry go ahead you know, i was going to say if they're lithium there have been a number of reports of bike fires and people being injured i'm just wondering if the fire department has reviewed this and it, you know what guidance that they have given um, yeah, thank you. Uh, so the batteries that we have are, are under under Redmond Laboratory t uh, tested. So they're they're um, a lot of the e-bike fires you've seen are, are batteries that don't have any testing at all. Um, and no, the fire department has not not reviewed the the batteries uh, specifically. Um, they're they're much smaller than a lot of the bigger batteries, like in cars or in, in buses and whatnot. But but thank you for your comment. I'm, I do have one sec an additional one is sure is there any liability assumed by the county since county funding is being used for this um well, we've had capital bike share for uh, six years um and so all we're doing is we're just adding it to another location in the county um and we have uh six other member jurisdictions too that that have uh that have bike share systems um, so the, the liability, it, it, it's like it's pretty much the same as we have today. We did have this reviewed by risk management when we first launched. Um, so I'm not quite sure that if we have the exact answer to the question, but the, mm -hmm. as Zach said, we're not we're expanding the existing program and that was um, evaluated by risk management for county liability at that time. Yeah, and I, I would also add too, we've we've had um, there have been studies too, even of of you know the way that the the bike share bikes are designed compared to classic bike or compared to your your classic ten speed bike. Um, they're they're a lot a uh, lot safer because um, people ride slower um, and whatnot, and uh, they're more upright um, than 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 uh, ten speed and uh, other other um, personal bikes. Um, so we, we've not had many many issues with that. Um, but but I really appreciate your question. Thank you, Ian. Uh, looks like Jorge is an additional question. Jorge, I'm allowing your mic. Thank you so much. Yes, uh, since there's a little bit of time, I did have a question. I wanted to ask if Fairfax County makes uh, uh, available 
any sort of uh, data dashboards uh, for the community to understand uh, the success of the Capital Bike Care Program, the ridership. Um, and um, since I have you guys on that line, I'm also interested in the student bus program as well. Um, so Capital Bikeshare is supposed to maintain a, the, uh, if you go to capitalbikeshare.com, there should be some updated data there. Um, if there's if there's not, please feel free to let me know at the, the bike Fairfax at fairfaxcounty.gov. Um, and I'm sorry, I don't think about the, the, the other program you mentioned. The uh, student bus pass program, if we do ah. have data on that, then that would be with from our transit services division with Fairfax Connector. And we unfortunately don't know. We don't, we're not um, super familiar with that program. But if you do contact us at dot info at fairfaxcounty.gov, we can, uh, they, uh, the moderator of that uh, email inbox can get your question forwarded to the right people. Thank you so much. Appreciate it. Absolutely. We're right, looking for any additional questions now. Seeing none, we will go ahead and move to the conclusion of our meeting on the Capital Bike Share Expansion in Franconia District. A recording of the meeting is available on the website at www.fairfaxcounty.gov forward slash transportation slash bike hyphen walk slash Fairfax hyphen county hyphen bike share. Uh, thank you for joining us. Supervisor Lust, do you want to have any closing words? You're muted. Can you hear me now? Yes, thank you. No, I just want to thank everyone for their uh, thoughtful comments. And I think there's some things and nuggets here that we can certainly uh, look at. And I'll say um, the idea about the student pass having access to the bike share program is one we will definitely take a look at. Um, the points that came up with regard to um, the sidewalks uh, along Jefferson Manor, um, which are um, on uh, North Kings Highway. Uh, we are we are looking to make some improvements to that infrastructure, and it's um, being evaluated in concert with the bus rapid transit uh, improvements. And then um, the improvements along the Franklin Springfield Parkway, as it relates to the um, trail. And I heard the uh, comment about as you're getting closer to the bridge that connects you into the metro. Um, we are looking at uh, getting that upgraded as well. So each of those items are uh, on a list. Um, they're not funded currently, but we are looking for ways to fund them either through proffers or other uh, public dollars. So I just wanted to uh, iterate those points. And again, thank you all for being a part of this and uh, looking forward to the next steps. Thank you all again for joining us. We really appreciate your time and participation. Oh, I have one late joiner here. We are just closing up, sir. So thank you all of us for joining, all of you for joining and have a great evening.